Yes, guys, welcome back to another video here on the Andy Hashtag One channel. We've had a couple of weeks off, but I'm back again with John Harrison, Twitter extraordinaire, goalkeeping analyst, data scientist, astrophysicist, and everything else that I like to mention normal. Uh, John Harrison, John, how have you been over the last few weeks? Yeah, no, it's been good. Uh, enjoyed the enjoyed the quality of the football we've been getting, and now it's getting towards the business end of the season. It's all becoming a little bit more serious. In the words of Alex Ferguson, it's squeaky bum time. Uh, more for, well, obviously, we've, we've had teams that are relegated and we've had a team that has won the Premier League, but it's around that Champions League spot, which now things become a little bit more interesting. Yeah, indeed. It's going to be exciting to see the games that are happening recently and see whether, yeah, are Leicester going to do it? Are Liverpool, Chelsea going to do it? It seems like it's all of them are passing the baton over to the other with a few drop points recently. But yeah, we'll see. Now, this series is called Goalkeeping Week in Review. Uh, and we've had what a week for goalkeeping we have had. There's been two outstanding, well, two standout performances, let's say. One in Alisson. Uh, what a header that is. Have you ever scored a goal playing in goal? Have you ever scored a goal playing in goal? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. so I scored one, but it was a sidewinder from my hands. So I've not, I've not gone up and scored a header, but no, I've, I've, put, I've scored a, a nice little sidewinder. It was one of those, came caught across, ran to the edge of my box, tried to do a counter-attack. I, be, <laughs> I swore when I hit it because I knew I'd massively overhit it. But luckily, yeah, it bounced like penalty spot, I think, and the keeper got mixed up. So it bounced there, went over him and in off, off one bounce. So, yeah, but ne never a header. <laughs> uh, see, I, I've got a theory that goalkeepers should be incredibly good at cross-taking. It's one of their, their uh, strengths. So timing, flight, all that sort of thing should be a strength of a goalkeeper. So Alisson simply coming up and winning that header. You know, Stuart Pearce tried it with David James. I think we should see more of this. Campos as well. Uh, Schiller there, goal-scoring goalkeepers. I think we should see more goal-scoring goalkeepers uh, in the future. Hopefully, Edison will take a penalty for Man City as well. Uh, and we'll see everything. But we're not talking about Alisson today. We're actually talking about Kasper Smichael and his man-of-the-match performance, although it wasn't a man-of-the-match performance, according to the uh, pundits or whoever gave that. Award, but it absolutely should have been his man of the match performance in the FA Cup final versus Chelsea. Yeah, indeed. No, it was a really, really special performance. And it was a sort of weird one that most of his goalkeepers will have had in the past, where in the first half, you basically have nothing to do. And then once the game sort of turns and your team takes the lead and goes 1 0 up, suddenly you have a few huge moments. And if you make them, your team wins. And if you don't, your team doesn't. It's as simple as that. Now we're going to get straight into the stats and your model that you've uh, you've compiled for this, and uh, we'll flash it up on screen now. And on your model, Cashbridge Michael has made three saves, and I watched the game and I don't remember three saves. So he's made uh, first save from Ben, Ch ben Chilwell's header to his right hand side. Second save that I remember is to his left hand side from Mason Mount, and the third save, John. Yeah, indeed. So that save actually happened earlier and it was a sort of looping header from, from Marcus Alonso. And yeah, the reason you don't remember it is because, yeah, a header from 14 yards, it was at 35 miles an hour, just but looping as well, straight into his hands, straight down the middle. It's not something that the, the highlight reels will capture. And my model realises that as well. So it's got, as you can see from the graphic, an expected save probability of 99%. Because unless Casper thinks he can come for the cross and gets in no man's land and it lobs over him, that's basically the only way it's going in. So the expect save probably really, if you, if you take it to account the goalkeeper's position, will be 100%. But the model doesn't do that because it needs to sort of benefit goalkeepers who have good positioning. So, yeah, that's that's that save. Very simple. Every, all professional goalkeepers will make it so we can we don't have to talk too much about that. So let's not talk about it then. Let's get straight into the header from Ben Chilwell. I think it was Rhys James. Was it Rhys James who put it into to Chilwell? Uh, and then it, it was a rather... I'm going to say it's an unorthodox save. It was more of this kind of scurrying save. He seemed to get, instead of being square on, he seemed to get side on. He's taken off on his left foot, his outstretched right hand, and he's kind of clawed it away. He might have even collided with the post a little bit after making the save. I thought that was a fantastic save, and your model kind of backs that up as well, doesn't it? Yeah, indeed. So, yeah, my model has it as your header from about seven, eight yards out, 21 miles an hour. But the, the, the difficult bit about this, even though it's a, it's a slower header than the Alonso one, which was more of a, a looping sort of bit of a bullet header, um, what happens is it scuffs off the side of Chilwell's head and ends up going right in that awkward place you can see on the diagram, right next to the post. 
And I think the way Chilwell sort of, if you watch it, the amount of spin he generates on it and the sort of, I guess it's weird, it sort of glances the header means that, yeah, Schmeichel gets his feet mixed up. So for me, this save is actually really good because it's a save that shows if you do get your feet mixed up and if you sort of get a little bit out of sync, if you have that determination to make sure you're saving it, you can still make the save. So like you say, he ends up crossing his feet over and pushing off with, with what would be the, the wrong foot. And the reason we say that is because if you do do that, it makes it harder for you to save it. We're not saying it's yeah inherently wrong because he, he made the save or whatever, or he shouldn't make the save. But um, yeah, indeed, it's, it's one of those where his sheer determination has allowed him to get there and flick it around the post. And it's something that I think if you've got in your locker is wonderful as a goalkeeper because it can't always be textbook. You won't always read the flight of the ball perfectly. And if like Schmeichel does here, you can make saves when you misread the flight of the ball, get your feet muddled up. I think that's a, a great sign. There always seems to be a lot of chat on Twitter between right technique and wrong technique. Uh, and I was just think within that is that would you rather use the right technique and not make a save or the wrong technique and make a save? Yeah, no, exactly. Um, yeah, for me, it's like every goalkeeper should strive to make every save as easy as possible and to use the sort of optimum technique, as, as we call it, in, in those situations. But you can't make, and everyone knows this, no goalkeeper will make 100% of the decisions correct. This optimum technique is all about speed of thought and speed of reading the ball and then making a, a motion. And you can't always do that correct. So if you've got in your locker the ability to sort of just just get there, just get something on it, no matter what, even when you've misread it, it's a it's a really great skill. And that's how, yeah, Schmeichel pulls off a save that my model basically says will only get saved about a third of the time. Yeah, over two thirds, of the, basically around two thirds of the time, this, that header would have been beating a goalkeeper and the score would have been back to one hole. Now, if that was not textbook, now the next save, which was rightly so, it was lauded at the time when he made it, and then afterwards, this has been made out to be one of the greatest FA Cup saves, I think, ever. Uh, there was shades of, well, I think people mentioned as well, Montgomery save. I think, was that Leeds? I think he made that save. I mean, for me, the best FA Cup save ever would be um, David Seaman versus yeah. Casillo. That is just a phenomenal save. Uh, but this one, again, I mean, FA Cup final. I think that might have been semi-final or quarter-final, I think. The David yeah. Seaman save, but I mean the importance of this save, given the time and the difficulty of it, really comes out again in your model. Just what a top class save this is. Yeah, indeed. So it's so it's a shot from way inside the box. We've got it about yeah sixteen yards out, and then the, the crucial thing here is the shot speed. So my model, the the shot speeds it does have, and it takes into account it knows the average Premier League so top flight shot speed is about about fifty miles an hour, maybe just under. So Mason Mount absolutely cracked this and hit it at 59, close to 60 miles an hour. And so that means even though it's not in the corner, as you can see, it's just sort of in that, um, to Kasper Schmeichel's point of view, that uh, middle left third of the, of, of the goal, that's the reason it's so difficult to save because of the, because of the power on it. So yeah, my model's got it as, it, it only gets saved again, like roughly yeah, 40%, 38% of the time. So it's not like a, a one in a million save, but it's one that more often than not would beat the goalkeeper. So like you said, Andy, to make that in a moment that defines a game, basically, and a moment that defines a game where you win a trophy at the end of it, that's the sort of huge, huge part of this. Yeah. Now, I was listening to uh, a snippet from the Goalkeeper Union podcast with Rich Lee, uh, and he spoke about the timing of the set and, and how important that was. Just talk us through that element of that save. Yeah, indeed. So you can see we'll put the image on the screen now, these, these stills we have. And the, the first one is just when Mount's going to strike the ball. You can see he's already basically got across the goal and got set. So if you actually watch the full video, a header comes, like a lacrosse comes in for a header, Schmeichel backs off towards his line to maximise his reaction time, and then it loops back out to Mount. And you can see him doing really well to get across goal once this has happened, have a little step forward to make sure he's in the sort of optimum position. Because while you want to maximise your distance from the ball to have a lot of reaction time, you also want to get a little bit down the line of the ball. So you can see Schmeichel's here, maybe one and a half, two yards off his line, um, so that you actually can fill a little bit more of the goal. Because um, if you're right on your line, you have a huge distance to cover if you've got to go to either side. So yeah, he has this really good footwork and really good set position timing, as we can see here. And nicely, what I like about it is legs not super wide in a really nice position, body pretty upright, 
arms by his sides and ready to, to, to go either high or low, depending on what happens. There's no sort of excess movement here. And that's what you can see as the transition to the next still is that basically when he's getting his feet sorted, he has a little hop, but you can see it's, it's minute. It almost looks like his toes keep touching the floor and he has a little elbow tuck, um, which basically sort of keeps his hands central and makes sure he can, he can react anyway. But there's no, as we've discussed, I think with Pickford and Kepper and various other keepers before, there's no excess arm movement. The arms aren't flying around. The legs aren't super wide. It's, it's just a really tidy and nice set position. Yeah, and then you, I mean, you mentioned the little hop. Part of the little hop that goalkeepers do is to kind of preload, is to activate, uh, to get energised, ready for the spring that comes out. And the next stage of this is interesting me for is in, interesting to me from this part of the save is that he then preloads his right hand side, then his left foot is effectively in what would be classed as a negative step dive. Yeah, indeed, and I think it's a it's a great shot stopping technique decision choice I guess as we'd call it to, to do this motion because in a, in a split second he's basically calculated that um, I can get to this ball if I'm at full stretch from my position and like you say yeah a negative step dive because he hasn't taken a step towards the ball there's been no sort of positive influence from his step his steps technically taking him slightly further from the ball but it's one of those if you know and can read the flight trajectory of the ball perfectly then this is a perfect technique to use because you get to the ball so quickly. It allows you to get across and down um, really, really quickly. So it's one of those techniques that in a situation like this is perfect because you don't have time to sort of shuffle your feet, sort them out and take a power step dive. Um, obviously, if the ball was further in the corner, you, you can't do this technique because you, you can't make up the distance. But when it's a fast shot like this, and as we could, we could see from my first diagram, a fast shot like this, not quite in the corner, inside the box, basically 60 miles an hour, the only way you're going to save it is if you've done what Schmeichel does here, which is have a really tidy set position, really neat sort of routine with the arms and the legs, and then an explosive step. And likely, yeah, you have to use this sort of leg sweeping away from underneath you, negative step if you're going to get there quick enough. As otherwise, it's going to already be, be in the goal by the time you've pushed off your feet and, and sorted them out. Yeah, and I, anyone who follows me on Twitter, I mean, obviously, we should all be following John on Twitter and his handles on there for more goalkeeping insights but anyone who follows me on on twitter knows that i only ever really talk about two podcasts that i listen to one is the diary of a ceo by steve bartlett if anyone's interested in that and the other one is the high performance podcast with uh, jake humphrey and cash casper michael is on that podcast and he talks about working in millimeters as a goalkeeper and that's the level that's the fine detail and the fine margins that goalkeepers are working to and the two saves that we've especially seen today kind of really emphasize that point doesn't it yeah, no, indeed. The, the first saves literally millimetres, because if he doesn't get that tiny fingertip touch, it's probably hitting the post and going in. And then, yeah, the second saves all about the millimetres of distance of feet off the floor, distance of arms, and then, I guess, mill milliseconds in the, in the speed of his decision making to realise he can get there with the sort of collapse negative step, whatever you want to call it, dive and just get a strong hand to it. Now, I want to ask you the question, John, is how good is Cash Bush Michael? Because, I mean, he, he's had a, a different career trajectory or a different career journey, I suppose, to his dad. He's always had his dad, Peter, as, a, as someone that's been spoken about, he kind of in his shadows. Peter Schmeichel, obviously, was an absolute giant, literally, in every sense of the world, in the goalkeeping um, departments. Has he finally stepped out of that shadow, do you think, to be a goalkeeper in, or a top-class goalkeeper, I should say, of his own right? Yeah, I think, to be honest, I've always said this the whole time. I think it's been so difficult a journey and more difficult than any other professional goalkeeper, really, to do what Cashwish Michael's done. Because we've got to remember, not only is he sort of in the shadow of his dad constantly, and that meant even when he was a League Two goalkeeper, League One goalkeeper, people were still like putting him under the spotlight. And if he made mistakes, you'd hear about it, even if he's in League One and League Two, which would not happen to a sort of normal goalkeeper who didn't have the father he had. So I think he's actually had a much tougher time of sort of progressing and the fact that he sort of had the humility to go through those lower leagues and then sort of earn his chance getting a big money move to Leeds and then further on moves to Leicester and things like that the the fact he's managed to do that and then become Denmark's international goalkeeper and play at World Cups and be a standout performer for Denmark at World Cups and win Danish players of the year I think he's by far yeah got out of his dad's shadow and he's definitely a, a top keeper and he's 
own right, especially now he's won the Premier League and the FA Cup and putting in so many big performances in those two seasons and, and two cup runs and Premier League runs, I think means now, yeah, we shouldn't be mentioning him in the same breath of his dad in terms of every time you mention him, you have to mention his dad. I don't think that's the case. I think we can talk about Kasper Schmeichel as his, as his own goalkeeper. Yeah, so, I mean, what surprised me is that he's played almost 400 times for Leicester. For seven years, he's been Leicester's number one in the Premier League, and that's absolutely no mean feat whatsoever. But within kind of mainstream press and uh, other general outlets, he isn't really spoken about in the same breath as David De Gea was when he was at his, uh, his height, as Hugo Lloris was uh, for a certain period of time. And now the focus is always on Alisson and Edison. But the stats that you've even got for this year and for previous years as well show that Kasper Schmeichel is always in that top uh, bracket of goalkeepers across multi, I was going to say multi-disciplines, but it's those areas of strength for a goalkeeper, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. So he always basically comes out for those, whatever, seven years he's been at, been at Leicester. He's always in the top, yeah, eight, six for, for shot stopping in the Premier League, for, for goals prevented, so saving above his expected saves. He's always in and around the top 10 for claiming crosses and sweeping up behind his defence. And he's in the top sort of five or six for, for his distribution. He's got exceptional range with his goal kicks and a, a lovely sidewinder, which he likes to do at really short distances, which other keepers don't too much, which I really enjoy watching. So yeah, I think he's definitely been for that a solid above average in sort of all, all categories goalkeeper for Leicester. And I think that's why he's managed to sort of keep his place in this team that's changed quite a lot over the over the years and it's it's fun that his trajectory has sort of gone from lower Premier League battling for relegation to now yeah Leicester charging for Champions League every year charging for Europe every year so I think it's a nice reflection on sort of his career how it's gone from having to battle in the lower leagues to now being a full international goalkeeper and one of the yeah top 10 in the Premier League. John absolutely thank you very much for that uh, insight into Kasper Schmeichel and his performance versus Chelsea and overall, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again about these sort of things. If you don't follow John already on Twitter, make sure that you do. Uh, his handles, I always get this wrong. Is it up there or is it up there? I'm not quite sure how this then reflects on there. But make sure you go follow John on Twitter for some more uh, quality goalkeeping insights. If you haven't liked this video already, make sure that you do. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, again, make sure to subscribe to the channel. More goalkeeping content coming soon. Thanks for watching. See you all soon.